Hello guys, this is Paul McCorder from TopTechBoy.com and we are here today with lesson number one in our incredible new series of Arduino tutorials where you are going to learn how to use a non-axis sensor to create an inertial measurement unit. So what I'm going to need you to do is pour a nice enormous mug of iced coffee. You will not need any sugar in it. It is delicious just the way it is. And then I need you to pay attention because I am going to be outlining what we are going to be doing in this series of lessons. First of all, let me ask you a question for my longtime su subscribers. What's different today? If you can see what's different today, leave a comment down below. For the rest of you, you'll just have to uh, check the comments to find out what's going on. So let me start by kind of introducing you to the hardware that we are going to be using in this series of lessons. I will scoot out of your way a little bit. What we are going to be using is we are going to be using an Arduino Nano. And the reason we like the Nano is because it's very easy to put on a board. And you see what a nice, clear, uh, simple build that we have here. And as we're moving this thing around, the chances of having a wire come loose are much, much less. We've got a nice, secure build, which is really needed when you're going to do a complicated project like an IMU. And then secondly, we are using the BNO, the Adafruit BNO, uh, 055 uh, non-axis sensor. All right, and I've got links down below to Amazon for these two components. Now, I can hear you yelling and screaming already that this uh, BNO 055 sensor is relatively expensive compared to a lot of the non-axis sensors. A lot of the non-axis sensors maybe you could get for nine to fifteen bucks, and this one's a little bit more than thirty. And I can see the comments coming already. Oh well, can I do this with a different sensor? Guys, we need to be using identical hardware. And what I will say is of all the projects that I've ever done on Arduino, inertial measurement units are the most challenging. And therefore, we need to be using the same hardware. And the other reason for using the BNO 055 is it does some of the math for you. It has some helper applications where some of the hard things you have the ability to have the chip itself do, and then that makes our job over on the Arduino side a lot easier. And so guys, don't start putting comments down below asking me, oh, when I do this on the blah, 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 then uh, I'm not getting the same result. Well, this is designed for us going along together using identical hardware. And if you go through this series of lessons with me, it looks like I have about 20 lessons planned. You will you will not only understand how non-axis sensors work, you will be able to use them and incorporate them into your projects, okay? So that is kind of where we're going with this thing. Let me show you in the end what we are actually going to end up with here if you follow me through these lessons. Okay, what do we have here? We have the Arduino hooked up to the BNO 055 and this, ah, this is the real world. Okay, this is the real world and then over here, over here we have the virtual world and what I want you to watch is like imagine that this is an airplane, okay? Here's the nose of the airplane, and uh, imagine that we have an airplane. The nose lifts up in the real world. What happens in the virtual world? The nose lifts up. The airplane taxis and turns. It taxis and turns, okay? The airplane takes off and then banks left and then banks right, okay? Let me show you, you see we can yaw this is a yaw 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, and then all the way back to zero. Okay, nose up, nose down, roll left, ah, let's see, roll left, roll right, airplane going away from us, nose up, and bank left, nose up, bank right. Ah, we got a jet fighter and he's going to go into a nose dive straight down. Do you see the yellow vector 
The yellow vector represents kind of this direction where the pin is. So you can see the yellow vector kind of represents the, the green pin here. Let me show you. This is what's really, really hard. And if you guys have not played around with one of these, you probably can't appreciate how hard this is to, to do. But look at this. I'm going to roll all the way to 90 degrees. And then as I am rolled 90 degrees, I am going to change my heading. OK, and do you see how this is working perfectly, that my animation is following absolutely what is happening in the real world? How about we do a roll and turn all the way upside down? Do you see? All the way upside down, all the way back, and then coming back. So guys, this is the direction we're going. I'll also show you, I did this just so that you could sort of have an animation that, that you can see the X, Y, Z axis. And just a quick introduction to Euler angles, three angles that kind of describe where, where an airplane is going. Yaw or heading is just the direction you're going. And so like this would be north. Uh, let's let's say that this was north, east, south, and then west. Okay, that that's a direction. Well, you also have a pitch, and so the airplane might want to the airplane might want to take off, and the nose comes up, or it might want to dive, and the nose goes down like that. Okay, so this is pitch. This is yaw. So yaw is sometimes called heading. And then also, like, we pitch up, like we're taking off, and then you want to turn, and so you bank the airplane, and this is called roll, okay? And so you have yaw, you have pitch, and you have roll, okay? And we can even roll upside down. I think this is just super cool. Let me give you another uh, quick example of what we're going to be doing. I hope I can make this work. Okay, let's see. I might need to kill this other one first. Uh, just showing you that once you get the math taken care of, you can do all types of different things. And I believe this is the one that I'm going to want. OK, and then let me spin it around. This uh, BNO 055, to kind of get it oriented, you've got to sometimes spin it around a little bit to get it to know which direction. Okay, there it is. I believe we've got it now. Okay, so you see now my simulation, instead of something arbitrary, my simulation looks a lot more like what we are really dealing with. We got our breadboard, and then we have our uh, Arduino, and then we have our BNO 055, and same thing. I can roll, I can pitch, I can yaw. And whatever this board does in the real world, the simulation does in the virtual world. Now, man, can you imagine how obsessive compulsive we could get and start putting the little, the little fine details? Uh, let me see. Okay, yeah, that focused pretty good. Start putting the little fine details in our simulation. Can you imagine putting these red lines and blue lines on our simulation? Can you imagine going in and putting all the holes? Sometimes when I have students, they get completely obsessive compulsive about making their simulations get more and more accurate. But for now, what I need you guys to do is I need you to go away and order your gear. You're going to get the... Uh, Arduino Nano, you're going to get the BNO 055. And then let me kind of give you a rundown of what we are going to be doing in these next lessons. I'm going to go back to that other simulation because I just actually like it a little bit better, even though this one looks more real. Uh, let's do this one. Okay, yeah, I like, I like this one a little bit better just because I think it is so, so cool. And I got to get it oriented again by spinning it around a little bit, get those gyros working right. Uh, there, I think it's snapped. You can kind of see it pop when it gets uh, gets its orientation figured out. OK, so what we're going to do in this series of lessons, today was just an introduction. I sort of showed you this is the endpoint that we're going to. If you'll go through these series of lessons, you're going to figure this out. But again, you're not going to just go in and copy my code. You're going to understand how the things work. And so next week, what we're going to do is we're going to hook up the BNO 055 in the circuit. You can see it's just two wires. It's an I2C, so you use the SEL and SDA lines. 
very, very simple to hook up. And then we're going to write our first program. And basically, we're just going to show that we can talk to the BNO 055 and that we can pull the data off of it. That'll be the second lesson. In the third lesson, we're going to talk a little bit about how you get calibration on this thing. The BNO 055 doesn't just spit out raw data, it spits out calibrated data, so you've got to kind of help it find its calibration. We're then going to show you uh, basically there's a lot of numbers we're going to be using and simply watching numbers stream by on the uh, serial monitor. You need to get a little bit more of an early visualization. So I'm going to show you some software that allows you to very elegantly graph data that's coming off the sensor. And so we'll get that installed. We're going to then talk about how does an accelerometer work. You've got this little chip and you've got magic happening. But how does an accelerometer physically work? What does it look like? Like if we popped the lid off of this thing and looked under a microscope, what would it look like? Then we're going to talk about gyros. How do the gyros work? This is a non-axis sensor, right? What are the non-axis? It has three accelerometers, an X, a Y, and a Z accelerometer. It has three gyros, an X, a Y, and a Z gyro. And it has three magnetometers, an X, a Y, and a Z magnetometer. The accelerometer measures acceleration. But what we're going to find out is, I'll give you a little heads up, an accelerometer does not really measure acceleration. An accelerometer really measures the forces that are acting on a suspended mass. We'll get into that in a later lesson. We'll, we'll learn what an accelerometer actually looks like, how it works, and then how we can use the numbers coming off of it. We'll learn how the gyros work, and then we'll learn how the magnetometers work. All right, so we're going to peel back the hood on this thing and understand how those components actually work. We're then going to show how you can start. You know, this is really complicated stuff I'm showing you, but we're going to show, show you how to start with just using the accelerometer. You can make a simple tilt uh, sensor where you're just measuring tilt. You might not always need to be, do this full-blown simulation. You just might want to know if your Jeep or your RC car is tilting at a certain angle. Maybe we'll do a two-axis tilt sensor where you can see are you tilting side to side? Are you tilting nose up or nose down? So we're going to learn how to do uh, the math behind doing a tilt sensor simply by using accelerometer. Then we're going to see that you can do a little bit better if you fuse the accelerometer and the gyro data together, how you kind of use the, the limitations of the accelerometer. The accelerometer have pros and cons. The gyro has pros and cons, and how you can take the advantage of the accelerometer and the advantage of the gyro and bring them together to get more stable and more accurate uh, uh, results. We're then going to uh, look at how to make a compass where you can see what direction you are spinning like that. We're going to then start understanding these Euler angles. It's spelled E-U-L-E-R. Common mistake is to call them Euler angles, but they are actually pronounced Euler angle after the man Euler. We're then going to get kind of a brief introduction to quaternions, and quaternions are these magical numbers that help you actually solve this problem. So in this one where you can go upside down and it works in all these strange orientations, I actually had to use quaternions to make this work. And we'll get we'll get into that. You'll learn it. Okay. Then we're going to talk about how to get the data from the Arduino into vPython, Visual Python, so you can start doing these 3D simulations and do these really neat, uh, really, really neat graphics. And these will, my friend, impress your girlfriend. You show your girlfriend these 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 simulations we're doing, she's going to say, "That's the guy for me." Okay, impress your girlfriend by the time you get to the end of this. All right, then we're going to talk about some of the warnings and limitations of IMUs and some of the particular limitations of the BNO 055. And the other disclaimer I want to give you in this whole series of lessons, this is for demonstration purposes. If you're going to do something like put an IMU on an unmanned aerial drone, which is basically a flying blender, you have to go into this way, way, way deeper than what I'm showing you here. I'm showing you how to use it for a simple simulation. If you're going to use this to control a flying blender that could fly into someone's face, you have to go into it a lot more deeply than what I am in these series of lessons. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to introduce you to the topic where you can get started. And one of the problems is, man, it's just like all this stuff 
very few people understand how these IMUs work. It's like everybody's running around copying code from other people, and there's like a handful of people out there that kind of really understand what's going on. And so what we want to do is we want to, we want to instead of just going in and using libraries, we want to really dig in, understand how those sensors work, and understand how the math works. And I promise you I will take you through it step by step. I promise you if you will follow along through these lessons that you will learn how to do this. Okay, leave your comments down below. Let me know whether you like this lesson. If you kind of want to do this, give me a thumbs up, say I'm in, or if you look at it and don't want to be a part of it, let me know. I need to kind of get some feedback if this is the type of thing that you're interested in in the future because, you know, those first lessons, those first 65 series or 68 series of Arduino tutorials, it was just the very fundamentals, the very basics. Now we're getting into the real kind of big boy and big girl stuff to start doing, uh, start doing projects like this. Let me know if you the guys think you're ready for something like this. If this seems like way over your head and you haven't done those earlier lessons, go back and do the earlier lessons before you jump in and do this one. Okay, guys, I'd appreciate your comments down below. Would appreciate if you would give me a thumbs up. Be sure and subscribe to this channel. When you do, hit the bell so you'll get notifications for, uh, for these lessons. Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com. I will talk to you guys later.